Hello everyone, this is H the Husky Husky here, and I am back with some more StarCraft 2 action, and uh, this game was sent to me to my huskyreplays at gmail.com account, and again, I'm still feeling a little bit sick, so my brain is moving even slower than usual, so if I ever trail on about something a an awkward amount of time, just excuse me. My head's also really stuffy too, I'm having a hard time hearing correctly, so uh, hopefully I don't die. But that's okay, because at least I would die doing what I love, which is casting and playing StarCraft 2. Now, this is from, according to the email I got, it is from the ACL Pro Qualifiers that were held in Melbourne. And uh, had a lot of players from Australia for that one. I'm kind of excited. I did look up both of these players' ranks, and they're kind of like mid-masters rank, maybe a little bit higher, but that is on the SEA server, which uh, I'm not too familiar with a lot of players from that server, but I do know that some good players have come out of there. And um, we shall see here if that is indeed going to be the case. Now, this is going to be one of the newer maps out there. Uh, the name of the map is... Oh, uh, what is it? Calm Before the Storm. It is calm before the storm, so we may be experiencing the calm before the storm right now. While well, these players are building up, so just kind of kind of quickly go over this game. This is one of the reasons I want to cast this, is it is a newer map. So I wanted to make sure that everyone's familiar with it. Watchtower in the center with four choke points leading up to it. It is completely shrubbery surrounded. There is no really close spaces right here. Usually, you know, on a watchtower, you'll see grass further around the edges, but rather this one is right on top. There's only one watchtower on the map. There is going to be a base inside of your main. This is a full operational base. There is eight mineral patches here. All of them do have 1,500. Sometimes they do something fancy, and the Vespian geysers do have 2,500 apiece. And then your, I guess you could call it your natural, if this was a normal map, right outside your base. Boom, boom, four and four, and these are 2,500 apiece as well. So this is very, very similar to some previous maps we've seen where you're able to get out um, crevasse, for example, was like this. But this one doesn't even have that uh, big of a risk for expanding first. So I, I kind of like this map. I'm not sure how it's going to play out balance-wise, but it does mean that we're almost guaranteed to see more macro-oriented play. We're almost guaranteed to see expand first builds. Not always, though. You can see that Kez does have a couple of Zerglings going to be on the way. At least his spawning pool is done. There's the two Zerglings right there to prevent scouting. And is he going to go for an early natural? I think so. This probe is kind of chilling out. Is going to spot the drone going down there. So I think that... Well, I'm actually not quite not sure how to say this name. It's SQLT10 Fiza or Faza. I'll probably call him Faza, which is probably incorrect, but just know that I love you all the same. Um, I don't think I introduced the player. So spotting the bottom left side, it is SQLT10 Faza. And in the bottom right side, it is Kez, which is much easier to say. So I may be saying his name a lopsidedly amount. Like if there was a, a pie chart on how many times I said Kez compared to Faza then uh, it'll probably be heavily skewed in that favor of Kez. Now, we do have both gas up and running now for Faza. He does have his expansion now, and the cannon right there kills that poor little Zergling. Uh, that poor, at least I think it was a Zergling, right? Yep, I believe so. I believe it was. Now, I'm really curious to see how these players play this new map. Um, they're playing it basically how I would play it if I was Zerg or Protoss, where the Zerg player is getting up his three bases readily, because really it's just like defending a natural, because this one's going to be very safe for quite a while. And I'm getting an early expand as Protoss. I would absolutely do on this map. Double gas going to be going down there fairly early as well. And simply put, it's super easy to defend there. You don't have to worry about getting lots of cannons. You don't have to get your buildings positioned perfectly. You don't have to throw down any extra buildings. Don't even really have to hide your buildings all that much. Just put them in the center. Or judging by the spawns, you could probably hide them in your basins or in the, this expansion inside the main as well. So I, I do think that we are going to be seeing a macro game here, which I get all giddy and excited about, just because so much different stuff can happen. Look at how many creep tumors it does take to connect these. We do have one, two, and three. Maybe if it was slightly better placed, it wouldn't take three, but regardless, it does take a while to connect this. But the angle of the creep spread that he did here is really good. He's not wasting his time putting one here and then putting one down there or anything like that. He is actually going to be um, kind of doing them at an angle over here so that he can get moving towards the center of the map as soon as he can. Now, this is one of those maps that has interesting uh, spawn symmetry in that the Protoss player, his natural, is expanding away 
Uh, I, I never know if to call it a natural if it's inside your main or not, but it's expanding away from the main base of his opponent, while this one is expanding towards his opponent's main base. So that can play some roles in balance, but you got to remember that um, the same goes for expanding to his natural. This one's going to be towards his opponent, while his other one is kind of away. So it, that, that, at least via air. The way we do have four spine crawlers going to be going down here for Kez, as he is evidently preparing for a major ground army, but he is going to have to be going up against double Stargate, which we do have Phoenix being pumped out of here. I don't think we have a single Void Ray on the field. No, we don't. This very well could be Mass Phoenix, which is always a fun build to go as Protoss. That's a build I recommend going if you want to have fun. Um, not really the best build to end up learning the game because you'll be so focused on microing the Phoenix that you won't be working on your macro, you won't have good unit composition, but at the high level of play, Mass Phoenix can be good. Plus, on a map like this, maybe it's something that will pay off. Now it does look like FaZe are going to be going for a lot of Phoenix before he decides to move out and show these, which Kez does not have a lot of defense amply prepared for this. He has a lot of spine crawlers, and this is probably way, way, way overkill, but I think what he's doing this for is because he has a, a Zerg player in this situation can have three fully operational bases and that is such a good spot to be on and quite easily able to get that as well. But once the Phoenix move out, he's going to realize, well... These spine crawlers are actually doing absolutely nothing. So he is putting Evo Chambers in the front as well. So this is going to be virtually impossible to break until the uh, Colossus come out with that Thermal Lance. But a lot of Overlords going to get taken out here. One Overlord already goes down. There goes the second one as well. And there we go. Finishes that Overlord off. Is going to have to make a lot of Overlords as well as a lot of Spore Crawlers. These units are going to be so vulnerable to these Spore Crawlers. Or not the Spore Crawlers, excuse me, the Phoenix. Where Zerg player has been droning. Fairly hard. You just got to remember he has invested a lot in these spine crawlers. I would say way too much. But we'll see if that ends up paying off or not in the later stages of the game. But for now, we are going to be seeing a lot of workers going down as well as a lot of overlords. Probably wants to pick up as many drones as he can as quickly as he can, which is kind of frustrating to try and do when you're just hovering over their mineral line because the Phoenix actually get in the way of your own Graviton Beam. Graviton Beam? Yep. Yeah. Graviton Beam. And uh, we do have more Overlords going to be going down. This is so frustrating for Kez. But you got to remember that when your opponent goes this many Phoenix, you can afford to lose quite a bit. Although I don't know about this much. This is going to be a lot of Overlords. We do have Infestors on the way, or at least the uh, the Pathogen Glands, to be able to Fungal Growth all these Phoenix, which can be really, really devastating. The Queens do go down, but at the cost of one or two Phoenix here. What is this Phoenix doing? Apparently staying a little bit too long. And that Phoenix does pay the price for staying to kill that queen, but the phoenix flock is up to 10. Now, thankfully for the Zerg player, phoenix do not act like they do in Star or in Warcraft 3, where they were those flaming birds, where every time you kill it, it would turn into an egg, and then it would come back to life. Phoenix do not do that in Starcraft 2. I think that, that would be really, really good if they did. And by good, I mean overpowered. But uh, the phoenix now, just continuing to get map control. But you gotta remember, Zerg is comfortably sitting on three base, so until this third base, for FaZe that gets up and running, he's not going to be in the most comfortable spot because he still has just mostly Stargate units. And, and being able to actually get the ground army is going to be very, very important moving into the last stages of this game, it's especially kind of the mid-late game. That's when you really start needing to transition away from the Phoenix. You can use the Phoenix to deal with Hydralisks and some Infestors maybe, but it's really going to be the powerful units like the uh, Colossus like the Immortal, etc. Even getting Psystorm can be pretty good. So that is what FaZa is going to have to do here. Kind of looking at the units lost tab here, you can see about 19, now 2,000 resources lost for our Zerg player. Did he pick up a... Might have picked up the Zergling there just to prevent it from scouting out that Watchtower. And these random overlords placed around the map may get taken out. It's almost as if these Phoenix have their binoculars on trying to spot them. Does it spot that overlord? It's so close. There's overlords really on both sides. I'd be surprised if one of them didn't go down. But uh, the Phoenix are going to be chilling out over here. Creep spread pretty okay from Kez. I mean, it's not the best, but definitely not going to be the worst here. And the army composition starting to shape up here for FaZa as he's beginning to get that more standard Protoss army. Double, uh, double robotics facility here is something that I really like doing as Zerg. Um, or as Protoss. Man, I'm telling you, being sick. I'm blaming it on being sick. But uh, getting that double robotics for double Colossus production before your opponent has a Spire... That is something that is so good, although this is a lot of Infestors. Maybe way overkill on the Spore Crawlers as well. 
but um, the supplies are still favoring Protoss, which is not usually an ideal situation for a Zerg, but one thing that can change the tide of this battle is Fungals on those Phoenix. Yes, they are fast, but they are small and clump up quite heavily, which means that you can kill them off a, a very, very rapidly and kind of even out that supply. Now, are these Phoenix going to pick up the Zerglings? They decide no. Not worth it to go ahead and use that energy, although I actually think that it may be worth it to use that energy just because they have so much now and there's really nowhere. What is that sound? Oh, that's the garbage disposal. Our neighbor's using garbage disposal. I was like, oh god, my house is getting eaten by a giant transformer. Nope, just a garbage disposal. False alarm. And um, FaZa really needs to find a way to utilize these Phoenix. Um, I don't know that he's going to be able to, though, but Kez is kind of just stuck on his his behind. He's kind of sitting back and turtling. He's playing this very Terran-like. And uh, I, I think he's just kind of waiting till he has enough Infestors to warrant moving out. He has opened up the front door. He, these Infestors do have a ton of energy, nearly maxed out on that energy. They have the Burrow as well, which there's no Infestor tunneling claws or anything like that. So they will be able to move underground. But here come the Phoenix right now. They're going to pick up the Infestors. What is going on? There's the Fungals and the Infested Terra is going to be lobbed out. But a couple of these Infestors are going to go down. However, I think that the Phoenix are going to get crushed here. They are pretty fast. They can still move away. Although with poor Micro, they'll just sit here taking a lot of damage. So Kez was able to do some kind of breakout maneuvers there, but it is 166 supply to 121. But one thing about Kez is he is working on the upgrades. Chitinous plating, the Zergling Crackling upgrade, plus two armor, and even Neural Parasite he has on the way, which is going to be really, really good versus Colossus if he can get them into position. But um, Kez, I don't know if he's going to be able to deal with this push. This is so many Colossus. There's no Corruptors here. I don't think a single Corruptor is on the field. No, it's literally just Ultra Infester. Those are the only attacking units he has. Now, Mass Zergling may just get crushed by this right away unless he can get a crazy surround. I mean, we're talking crazy, crazy town surround. And uh, getting one Void Raid, two more is on the way. you got to remember that the Zerg player has no anti-air here. It does look like this is going to be a dangerous situation for Kez to be in. I don't really know what Kez can do here unless he gets the craziest of all crazy fungals. We are about to find out, though, as the uh, spine cars are slowly getting taken out. He's going to have to find a way to deal with this. He is going to go for it. Now, he only has a couple ultras, but the fungals are pretty good. They do get picked up by the Phoenix. Are the fungals enough to actually kill us off? Is he going to do this with a lot of infested Terrans here? He may be able to. Infested Terrans so cost-effective in this situation, and it does look like he will be able to push this back somehow. I think it's because his vastly superior upgrades, three armor on the Ultras, um, once that chitinous plating is done, plus the uh, plus two base armor nearly done as well, has managed to hold on. I thought for sure he was going to lose there, but Colossus with no upgrades versus Ultras with such good upgrades, that just shows you the effectiveness of the unit composition that our Zerg player had, managing to fungal growth those units so they could not escape. And I actually can't believe he held on there. Thought for sure it's going to be over, but he also had the crackling speed upgrade quite early. You got to remember it's only 18 minutes into the game, and sometimes you'll see a 50 minute game, and they still don't end up getting that upgrade. So now we do have an expansion up here for Kez. Going to be trying to secure that fourth discreetly, although he does have this one as well. Just picking drones one at a time here. It looks like not doing any big drone powering, but uh, once he remembers to make drones here and there, it's definitely going to be helping him out. I think though, what's more important is going for the gas at those expansions. That's really what's going to start paying off because Zerg players at these stages of the game usually are going to be hovering a lot of resources as far as minerals are concerned, but no extra gas because, I mean, when you're going for Ultras, Infestors, Broodlords, it begins to get just a little bit silly. Plus, you got to remember that you have to work on the upgrades as well. So getting these double expansion upgrades or the, the geysers is exactly what he needs to do, and that is exactly what he is doing. So playing this out perfectly, Kez is finding himself with a little bit of momentum here. He does have the supplies nearly even, and also using a lot of Zerglings for that map control. Look at this, 30 Zerglings on the way, plus he already has 43. So he can just consistently move around the map, find where these fourth bases are going down, and clean them out. This pilot's surviving for way too long. This army finally deciding that attacking it would be a good idea. But two Ultras do get intercepted here. The Immortal Count is uh, starting to look pretty good. Two Immortals on the way, and also a Fleet Bacon. Who doesn't love bacon? I can't imagine that anyone out there doesn't like bacon, except for people who don't eat bacon. But for those of us who do, we all know that it is amazing. This one poor Ultra is going to get taken out as well. It looks like, yeah, going the wrong way at the wrong time. 
And no blink on these stalkers, so maybe the ultra will get away. But the Zerg is going to come down, try and do something. But really, Kez is just throwing away unit after unit here. Now, the majority of them are Zerglings, which he can't afford to reproduce. But the problem is the larva that it takes to make Zerglings is just... Uh, you need a hefty amount. Although, with this many Corruptors on the way, it might actually be smart for him to throw away some of these Zerglings. I think that's what he may do. Try and either do some sort of drop which he does have the ventral sacks on the way, or try to do something to free up some supply for more broodlords, as he did uh, lose some more zerglings here in the center. As you can see, it did drop his supply a little bit. He does have four broodlords on the way, but this unit composition out of Faza, I'm really, really liking here, as uh, he has a ton of units, and really a good unit composition. This is something that Protoss always tried to get. Plus, he could go for a mothership as well. He is getting the plus one attack, which does mean the potential for carriers and has this expansion over here been spotted? I don't think that it has been. So we are going to be seeing a late, late macro game here out of both these players. I mean, we're at the 22-minute mark, and with the amount of resources on this map, that's why these players are able to get maxed out so quickly, but not only maxed out, but also have high-tech units so quickly, although this map does have a lot of valleys, which greatly favors Protoss here because you basically just line them up, do a lot of splash damage with your Colossus and... Uh, it, it can kind of be game over from there on out. But he is going to be going directly for the main base, but that is going to leave his other, his own main base completely wide open for a counterattack. Can he get in here? These units are heavily clumped up for the Protoss, so Fungals will be quite devastating here. The Brutalors trying to do as much as they can, but with no blink, um, they're going to be doing more damage than they really should be. Even Ultra is getting in on this, and by that I mean spinning in circles being completely worthless because of these pylons. There he goes right there, but uh, this is a lot of units as well. We may potentially be seeing a base race scenario between these two players. I'm not sure if it's going to turn into that or not. No, he decides to back out. I think that this is the complete wrong choice as the main base completely undefended here. And I think this is a way overreaction trying to fall back just to kill off a couple of units in his main. Especially since he was uh, where, where Protoss are most strong is at the front door knocking it down. But uh, for now, he is going to be able to get back and defend this. We do have a mothership on the way. It does have plus one range attacks done for his air units. Now, these ultras are all going to go down. They may do some damage to these colossus before they do. Look at how much damage they actually do once they can actually hit. But unfortunately, that was just a lot of stuff there from our Protoss player. And I think he needs to turn around and begin attacking rather than just sitting in his own main base. A slight overreaction there, I would say. I think just bringing back the Void Rays would have been the correct choice there. But no Zealot Charge yet. But plus two, plus two, nearly done. He also has the shield upgrade. you got to remember, Zerg don't really have a way of dealing with the shield upgrade. There's no EMP or anything like that. So shield upgrades are fairly good. This Ultra here may do a lot of splash damage to these probes, transferring at the complete wrong time. Zealots are not good versus Ultras. If you were wondering, look how many Zealots this Ultra is killing with a plus three attack. Plus four armor, plus they spawn with one, so that's a total of five armor. And I think that our Protoss player may have dilly-dallied around for a little too long in that he's trying to clean up these counterattacks with these Ultras and such. But I think he just needs to go for the Death Blow. But I think our Zerg player may have held on just barely long enough as he is going to be moving out. But we still do have a pretty close game as the supplies are virtually identical. But this Protoss Death Ball is something that can be very difficult to deal with. The upgrade's still not the best for our Protoss. I mean, Neural Parasite actually going to be used in this battle, but not for very long. I don't think that, that actually did the damage you need to. Nice fungals there to soften the army, but uh, with those shield upgrades, I don't know that the fungals are going to be doing enough here as they can just regenerate all that HP. Once again, it is 156 supply to 118. 26 minutes into a game, man. Not often enough do we get to see games like this. It does look like Protoss can be moving forward. He has Blink now, but no Zealot Legs quite yet. Zealot Legs, a very, very good upgrade, but his army is susceptible to Fungals. He does have everything on one hotkey here, so he needs to be extremely careful. The Mothership slowly moving her way out across the map, but he is going to be killing off the Zerg player's base. This might be it for Kez, as he doesn't have all that much. He is making eight Infestors. But where are those Infestors actually going to pop? It looks like some of them will be up here. But where are the majority of his units? He doesn't actually have that much. Even a Mothership getting in on this now. As it has made it all the way across the map. Although, I do want to mention that Kez has Mining Bases. While our Protoss player only has the one. And is actually long distance mining down here. Trying to kill off the rocks with the Void Ray here fairly soon. Oh, these poor Infestors. They should fungal while they still can. Ah, uh, they were so young. 
young and restless as they do get taken out there. And our Zerg player trying to muster up as many forces as he can. He's remaking his lair. Spawning pool on the way. But Kez is mining off of this base right here. He's mining off of this base as well. He has this expansion just now getting up. And he's also still mining gas sort of out of his main base, but also in that expansion. So our Protoss player may need to split up these forces rather than just chasing them around in a giant ball, which can be so tempting as a Protoss player. But we will see if our Zerg player can manage to hang on. It does look like these Infestors are going to get taken out as well. If he just blinks forward, they will all die. And I guess he's just going to manually chase them down. There's a blink right there, finishing that one off. Layer Tech is now done, but this is not looking good for Kez. He is moving in with the uh, Infestors here, though, and he could throw down a lot of Infested Terran and actually begin evening this out. There's a Broodlord over here as well, random Broodlord attacking this expansion. And the Protoss army is so slow that since he's not back here to defend, this could be doing a lot of damage. Just needs to throw out all the Infested Terrans, use all of his energy, dump it immediately. But one Infestor does go down with near full energy. Another one got to go down as well. There's the Neural Parasite. But where's the Infested Terrans? There they are, just lobbing out three measly Infested Terrans before reinforcing Zerglings get here. This expansion getting taken out, but once again, the Protoss is moving out with this entire army, which I think is still not the right choice. He needs to split up this army desperately. And if you look at the army size tab, it is 140 to 47. So Zerg player going to be relying on guerrilla warfare tactics here. He's still long distance mining. All of his larvae are dying. Oh, the humanity. And uh, at this point, I mean, if our Protoss player keeps splitting up like this, maybe the Zerg player can get back in this if he uses his Infestors correctly. One Fungal right there could do lots of damage. No, he decides to go for the Infested Terrans. The Fungal kind of whiffs a little bit, not getting as many units as he possibly could. The Mothership does have full energy, and the army is now getting regrouped here. Our Zerg player trying to hang on as best as he possibly can, throwing down spine crawlers as desperately as possible, but he just has no tech right now. Only the, the base that he has is in the right side. But since his Nexus has gone down, look at this. Protoss, zero income. Although I don't know how a Zerg player is going to defeat this army. Throwing out a couple more infested Terrans. I don't know if they're going to actually kill anything, though. Nope, only get off one or two shots. And the Infestation Pit still stands in the main base. The Spawning Pool does as well, which is barely on the creep, so it's not suffering any damage or anything like that. And still continuing to mine gas could put these drones to work as well. I think that just running units down here to try and counterattack is really the way to go. Because our Protoss player, he is not mining anything, I believe. I think it's like super long distance mining. Let's take a look here. He has four probes on the field. While the Zerg player has 34 probes. And that means that, that he can just keep replenishing this army. But can he actually get out enough units here? So far the Protoss has not allowed him to muster up the army that he needs. But uh, anything can happen here. Oh, losing a couple Infestors here and there, which is not a good situation to be in this Infestor. Looks like he's dangerously going to be following this army for a second. Not the best choice. Oh, these poor drones. Could he throw away any more forces here? Ouch, 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 ouch. He needs to hang on as long as he can to try and get out these units. It is 62 supply to 139. I'm wondering if it is even possible to come back at this point. Oh, dear. This is like the worst rally point of all time. This is like a cheesy B horror flick where they're just literally running into their own deaths. Even though it's so obvious that they shouldn't be going that way. So Kez, I don't know, I think he's going to be running out of steam as he is going to be losing a lot of his production capabilities as well. It looks like he may try to mass expand, but um, he is going to be counterattacking here. He does have the Infested Terrans down here now. These are the three Infested Terrans from before, although there is an Observer here, so the Zelts could go to town. On these Infestors, if he actually manages to focus them down, that would be really, really huge. Needs to run towards the Infested Terrans. But uh, does finally dump all of his energy into some Infested Terrans. And that is going to allow him to begin attacking this base. you got to remember that if the Protoss does not fall back immediately to deal with this, that he may actually end up losing the game because this base race scenario means that he has not split up his forces, which means if he loses all these buildings, that is it. Down goes his final Nexus, focusing that down with the three attack Zerglings. So now he's just going to split up everything and begin killing it off one by one. I think he's going to go for this Nexus as well. Probably a pretty good choice, preventing any sort of pro production. If that goes down, the Protoss player has no way of mining, while our Zerg player still does, but he's still at 59 supply to 52. So the Protoss needs to get back before he loses all his buildings. 
But the problem is, is that if he doesn't send enough units to the top right, which that's exactly what he's doing right now, then the game will continue forward. But the problem is that the Zerg is mining, while Protoss, I don't even think, has any probes left. He has eight probes, but not enough money for a Nexus. Maybe after that... Nope! Five short. Five short from a Nexus, while our Zerg player is still building. Oh, no! Protoss, you can't go to the top right side. He did put... Nope, that's not a pylon. He does have a refinery down here, but uh, I think what he needs to do is put the mothership right here and then mass recall once that refinery begins getting attacked. But he is assigned to go all in to the top right side. This is, I believe, all the Zerg has, unless there is a refinery somewhere. So this base race is pretty darn wonky as these units are now moving down here. This expansion will get taken out. I guess that's more of the main base. But who is actually going to end up winning this? I literally have no idea. The refinery does stand. It is getting attacked. These probes need to find somewhere else to build. Although the Zerg player doesn't really have anything either. I actually have no idea what's going to happen here as the supplies don't really matter as it's just going to come down to killing off the buildings. Does he kill that off? Is the game over? Or did he build something else? Oh, the protest didn't build anything. So Kez, I, be I believe, ended up winning. Did Kez win? Oh, wait, wait. Actually, who won? I'm actually not sure who won this game. <laughs> Uh, who who has a building? Does anyone have a building? I <laughs> I actually don't know who won this game right now. I got I gotta find a building. Is there is there a building? I I don't think there's actually a single building in this game right now. Uh, hang on, I gotta I gotta restart. Not restart, but I gotta go back. We gotta go back a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to go to right before the end of the game, and we're going to watch it in fairly slow motion here. Um, so right when this Zerg building dies, I'm going to stop it. And right there! Okay, so that just died, but this is already dead. I think... I think the Zerg won by, like, one second? Hang on, I, I, gotta, I gotta go back again. Okay, so, okay, this is how we're going to do it. I'm going to select this building. We're going to play, speed it up. Go ahead and get back to close to the end of the game. Okay, so I have that one selected, and we're watching this one. And the assimilator is going down quickly, quickly, quickly. And right there. That's actually where the game should have ended. I believe, because I think that's the last building for the Protoss. As, alright, well that is the first time in a game I've never actually, I've never in my entire life of casting StarCraft had to double check who actually won the game. But it all came down to the last extractor. And you gotta remember in StarCraft 2 it has to do with the last building standing, not with the last unit standing. So he managed to win against a 134 supply Protoss with only 31 supply. And quite frankly, it is the Protoss' fault for not guarding that. Like, why is the mothership, where is even the mothership? Up here. It is completely his fault for not guarding it. I think he thought he had time to throw down a pylon right there, but he needed to drop it right here, and then he would have won. So uh, I guess live and learn, and there's always always something new in StarCraft II, as I have never seen a game where it was almost a tie based on killing each other at the exact same second. So crazy stuff. Thank you guys for sending this to huskyreplays at gmail.com. Please keep the epic replays coming so I have to spend less time searching through replays and more time casting replays. So I hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time.